Hey, what's going on, guys? Mush back at it with another video. Want to go over AMD's insane financial report that just came out. They are doing ridiculously well. If you look at the AMD stock right now, it is insanely high. That personally hurts me a lot because I owned a lot of AMD stock for a while. It went up a little bit, and then I sold it all, and I did make a little bit of uh, plusing and profiting on it. But man, am I kicking myself so hard. It was like a meme when I bought AMD stock, like people were saying, jump on AMD stock, jump on AMD stock, and now they're at like $44, which is like insane to just think about. I remember people were talking about buying AMD stock when it was like south of $10 and whatever. Uh, to give you guys the exact stock price right now, AMD stock is at $47, and it's actually a little bit down today. But yeah, their evaluation is pretty ridiculous right now, given where they were at. And hey, from a PC consumer standpoint, that is exactly what you want. You want AMD to absolutely be in the game, and you want them to do even better than they were doing in the past, and you want them to do even better in the future than they're doing now. And I do want to go over the post over at Nantech, and I'll leave a link in the description box below where you can check it out uh, for yourself, because they have the entire transcript of all of the questions answered, uh, all of the answers given, and everything like that, a lot of graphs, and they have a lot of detailed information that I'm not going to go into all of it, but generally speak on what this means for PC gaming as a whole, and it means really good things, not just PC gaming, just uh, the PC world as a whole. Today, AMD announced its quarter for 2019 revenue of $2.13 billion, up 18% from the previous quarter, and up 50% from the same quarter last year. That is the metric you really have to look. Year over year being of 50% is an astronomically high number. This is accompanied by a 45% gross margin for quarter four, AMD's highest on record, up from 38% from quarter four last year and up from 43% in quarter three. Operating income for the quarter was up a staggering 1,143% from $28 million a year ago to $348 million this quarter and net income was up 34, uh, 347% to $170 million. The resulted in earnings per share of 15 cents up 275% from a year ago. For the full financial year, AMD is reporting revenue of $6.73 billion, up 4% from 2018, and a full year gross margin of 43%, up from 38%. Operating income was up 40% to $631 million, but net income was almost flat at $341 million. Earnings per share for the full year were down 6% uh, 6 to $0.30. Cents. Within the time period of quarter four, AMD paid down a lot of debt, down from $1,087 million in quarter three 2019 to $563 million in quarter four 2019. AMD's strategy here is to pay down debt and strengthen its balance sheet. Whether it ends up paying off all of its debt is dependent on the types of debt and if there are better uses for the cash. It was also noted computing graphics was the lion's share of the earnings gains with the revenue for this segment up 69% year over year thanks to the strong sales of both Ryzen processors and Radeon GPUs for gaming. Operating income was also up thanks to the higher margins on Ryzen processors now that AMD can compete and win on performance. They don't need to sell at such a discount, which of course is what is helping them turn the corner. Obviously, AMD for a long time, what was really beneficial to them is that they could just undercut competitors and that would be the big element. Now they don't really have to do that anymore. And AMD's perception has been changed a little bit and Ryzen is generally received as an elite level CPU. It's not the days of Phenom 2 or one of my favorite CPUs of all time, the FX 6300. Ryzen is viewed by the public, at least what I can tell anecdotally, and I do have a general idea of the pulse of the PC gaming community, at least I think I do. Maybe I'm wrong at that, at that. Uh, but I do think the perception on AMD, while I don't think it's completely completely shifted and the general reception still as like Intel is the premier CPU. I don't think it's that era where AMD is looked at as a secondary item as something that is a little bit scoffed at. I think Ryzen is looked at as a high quality elite level CPU that is worth the money and willing and people are willing to buy it. I think that is one of the strongest things AMD has done over the last year, year and a half. 
is something that I personally thought would have been very difficult to do, and that is to break perception. Breaking perception is so hard in everything in life. Once a perception has been established on you, to change that narrative, yes, it's possible, but it takes a lot of work, and AMD, kudos to them, they have absolutely done that. Expectations for uh, from AMD for 2020 is around 28-30% to 30 revenue growth, coming from product ramps such as consoles and ROM, with an overall 45% margin. This margin has two factors, the server margin, is going to be more than 45%, but typical console margins are less than corporate average, so that brings it down a little, although operating uh, margin for consoles are actually higher. Looking at the shorter term, AMD is expecting quarter one 2020 results to have revenues of about $1.8 billion, plus or minus around the $50 million mark, which will be 42% higher than quarter one 2019, with margins around 46%. So again, thanks to Nantech for the deep, deep breakdown, and definitely check out uh, the link to their article done by Ian Curtis in the uh, description box below. They've got all the graphs and they have a complete breakdown of the transcript of all of the questions that were asked. And if you want to read that in whole, it's a lot of information, but I do think it's a pretty insightful read and it gives you an idea of AMD's game plan heading into the next 12 to 16 months, especially with the arrival of the next generation consoles. This is going to be a very interesting time for AMD and it's the best for everyone as a consumer. This idea of AMD versus Intel, AMD versus uh, NVIDIA, it's just a dumb argument, especially in the case of uh, AMD versus NVIDIA. If you compare it to consoles, at least consoles have the distinction where they have separate games and uh, separate entities on each of the platforms, that, and there's a segmentation. There are people on Xbox that are playing on Xbox that necessarily don't always play with people on PC and PlayStation 4. Obviously, that barrier is being stripped down with the inclusion of crossplay and things like that, but it is a little bit more segmented. At the end of the day, with PC, if you have an NVIDIA GPU, you're going to be playing with people that have an AMD GPU in multiplayer games. If you have an NVIDIA GPU or you have an AMD GPU, you're going to be playing the same games most of the time. Sometimes a game will run better on one versus the other, but it's not like it's this astronomical difference that is going to make the world shatter or anything like that. It's generally a pretty suitable difference, which a lot of the times, if there are issues with one side of GPUs versus the other, that gets ironed out rather quickly. And just anecdotally speaking, I really haven't noticed any issues one way or the other for a little while, so it's not like it's this big deal. And I feel like a lot of the uh, arguments and the uh, the console war style of thinking with AMD and NVIDIA, that has tempered down over the last few years, and I think people at the end of the day just want quality components at decent prices. I think that more than anything is what people are worried about. Man, you just want quality stuff at acceptable price points, and you don't want to be paying an arm and a leg for a GPU. You don't want something like the crypto disaster a few years ago. You just want everything to level off and everything be at good price points, and I think AMD is really killing it. They're offering games as well with their GPUs. They just announced another motion where they're giving like Resident Evil 3, Monster Hunter World, Iceborne, and I believe there's another game included in there that is escaping me right now, and I feel like it's a relatively major, no, it's actually Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Breakpoint, that's not a major game at all, but uh, the two other games, uh, freaking Resident Evil 3 and Monster Hunter World, Iceborne, hell yeah, sign me up for that, they are offering immense value, and AMD, that has been what they had always done, however, they weren't always getting the recognition for it, I had always been beating the drum of, look at GPUs like the R. X580, like that is just a ridiculous uh, GPU from a value standpoint. The performance you get for that price point, it was insane. And I was saying that, you know, nine to, uh, nine months to a year ago, but now you still look at it and it's incredible from a value standpoint. And I'm just happy that AMD is getting some recognition. I'm happy they're back in the game. Uh, they never really fell off the game, but I'm happy they're being recognized as such. And they're being recognized at that perception level where they are a quality component manufacturer. They are putting out quality stuff and they don't have that stigma of being the second tier company because they absolutely are not the second tier company at this point so that's my two cents definitely want to hear from you guys sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below really a good time as far as competition goes and that is going to drive the industry forward and it's going to drive the prices ultimately down it's going to increase value look if nvidia didn't exist would amd be going out of their way to secure these partnerships with these publishers to offer you games like macho and world iceborne to offer you games like resident evil 3 for free they absolutely would not they would just be like hey we can price this wherever the hell we want we don't need to give them 
them that much value. We're the only game in town. You never want to be in a world where there's only one game in town. You want there to be a lot of other games in town. Uh, I would love there if there was four, five, six GPU manufacturers that were doing their own thing. But in the case of the climate right now, AMD, NVIDIA are really the two primary ones. So that's going to wrap up this video. If you guys have any thoughts, leave them in the comment section down below and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out. Hey, what's going on, guys? Mush here again. Hope you enjoyed the video. As you guys might know, YouTube's notification system is sometimes a little bit wonky, even if you're subscribed to the channel. Maybe you're not abundantly aware that I uploaded a video to remedy that situation. Make sure you hit the bell notification button. This way, whenever I upload a new video and I try to upload as consistently as possible, you will be notified directly of the upload and you can watch it as soon as it goes live. I would really appreciate if you guys hit that button so you can stay up to date with all of the the content I'm posting. But as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.